So masking is uh, a big topic because what masking does, it inhibits your executive functions. When you're hiding any identifiers and information and avoiding situations that may make your condition apparent, that is masking or hiding, camouflaging, uh, blending, <laughs> acting, many names it could go by. Um, when you're masking, you have a constant need to assess your situation. It requires a conscious awareness um, of your surroundings. And during that constant need, you have to adjust and assess and you know, it takes so much energy. It ends up having a cost to your own well-being. Uh, this can show up as illnesses, stress, uh, concentration loss, productivity loss. When you are using a part of your brain to mask, you are using that executive function to use, <laughs> you know, use up brain power instead of just being you and doing your job. So this increased stress, it expends energy with every new social interaction. So thus we have burnout, <laughs> we have, you know, downtime. It, it just really weighs down. I mean, personally, and it, I am still learning to unmask it every day. I'm learning to be unapologetic for who I am, trying to stop saying sorry, <laughs> but just saying thank you for your patience. and. Uh, you know, letting people know that this is how I am and it doesn't seem to have a problem. I actually just got uh, promoted in my workplace. So it's working, I guess, finally. Um, and it is, you know, it is uncomfortable to hide yourself now that I'm more aware of it myself. When I'm sitting there and I catch myself masking, I realize, oh, that's why I'm so tired and exhausted. If I just let myself be me and do my work, uh, it's a lot better well-being. I don't have that stress. I don't get snappy. So it, it is something to be very conscious about. So like I said, the cost to the individual, individual you get a high cost um, despite helping it na you know, navigate your day without attracting to any you know, disability. Uh, you have to be aware of the, that negative cost to yourself. Uh, when you're, the time you're spent during masking, you've got to realize that you're not able to invest in other kinds of personal development. If you're using your energy up to mask and try to not be who you really are, you can't work on those other development steps. Uh, that is one thing that I truly learned and took to heart when I learned to just let go of that and be like, okay, I'm me. I may fidget. <laughs> I let when workplaces know um, I'm lucky to work at home now, but when I did still work in person, if we had meetings, I'd tell them, hey, I'm gonna go stand up and back. I don't do well just sitting down. And if I you know, leave to go to the bathroom, it's just, I needed a break. And people understood. When I put that out there, out front, it made a much more understanding. And like I said, you know, if you keep the masking up, you're gonna have that burnout, that stress, and also when you have high masking, you get missed or misdiagnosis. Uh, hence, as Carol had mentioned earlier in women, we are more, much more prone to masking and uh, we go misdiagnosed very often. I wasn't diagnosed until after my own kids were. <laughs> and I know there's many, many stories like that. On the other end of the cost to the organization, when you have workers that are feeling they need a mask and hide who they truly are, like I said, it's using that executive function and it is reducing workplace performance. So we want to promote people to be who they are, not have to mask, not have to hide, and you know, letting them use their full potential. Also, it will reduce the burnout, it will reduce absenteeism, will reduce turnover. So when you're letting people be who they are, you know, and just produce, <laughs> you, you have a much more accepting environment. Uh, we are gonna, you know, diminish all those negative um, attitudes that happen. 